<laughs> uh, Chris Chinock here for Display Central at SID 2013. I'm here with Art Lathrop, the marketing development manager, or a mar some kind of marketing manager for 3M. That's right. That's okay. actually pretty good. Okay. Um, and what we're going to talk about is, is uh, QDEF uh, films that, that you've got. Uh, that are basically go on, on onto an LCD assembly. And um, uh, what you have here is actually a demo that shows uh, three different configurations. There's a standard uh, LCD um, uh, phone, uh, there's a, a modified phone, and then there's the, uh, an OLED display. That's correct. So let's, let's hold these up and you can tell me exactly what we're seeing here. Okay, so we'll, if you hold one and I'll hold this. Okay. So here we can see we have the standard LCD f device. Uh, it's approximately a sRGB or similar to Rec. 709 color gamut. And here we have the modified system. Uh, what you should be able to see, hopefully on the camera, is that there are two very large changes in the color. First, you have a very large change in the red and also a large change in the green. This green is very similar to the Adobe RGB green. This red is much, much deeper than what you would normally see for a display, but it is very close to the red that's used for the digital, digital cinema standard. Yeah, and the, and the blues are very similar, and the whites are actually pretty, pretty similar also. Yes, and in an in in actual device that had been well calibrated, the blues and the whites would be identical to the original system. Okay. So let's take a look at the OLED. You can yeah, I'll hold, hold this one, one as well. Up. So what you can see with the OLED, the, the OLED's green is, is very good. If we're looking at a standard uh, color filter set with QDEF, and an OLED, the OLED should be slightly better in the greens. But what you can see, though, is that the red is much better, much deeper in the, the modified system than it is with the OLED. Yeah. Also, because this is an IPS panel, the color shift off-axis is very, very good, uh, very small. And the OLED would be a little bit larger than that. And the white point on the OLED is also a little bit grayer, or quite, not quite as white as, as in, in a modified panel. And, and yes, and, and typically the uh, LCD devices tend to have much higher luminance than OLEDs. Uh, that's pretty, pretty typical with the devices that are in the market right now. Um, a lot of OLEDs do spend a lot of time to make sure surface reflections are a little lower. And, and for example, this particular device does not use optical bonding. So that's one reason why it does need to be a little bit brighter so that if you are outside, um, this display would just need to be a little brighter to overcome the lack of optical bonding. Gotcha. OK. OK. So the, obviously, you've shown this demo here. When are we going to see uh, products in the market using this technology? So we are shipping into mass production this summer. And we'd expect, with, with the delays that are in the supply chain, it would, it would be about Q4 that a consumer would be able to see one of these devices. Okay. And you anticipate, what, well, what products do you anticipate will be in the market? Well, so the biggest focus for this is for mobile. We do have demonstrations all the way from, you know, small, small cell phone all the way up to very large televisions. Yes, which, which we saw earlier. They're, they're very, very impressive. And so we are talking with, with display makers in all sizes, but mobile devices tend to be where premium high color displays actually have been led by OLED. Sure. And so this is an area where a lot of innovation tends to be in the market. Okay. You've also done a study that looks at uh, how people uh, perceive these, these different color spaces here. Yes. Let's go take a look at that. Okay. 